Are you interested in deploying Ubiquity access points for your home or business, but you aren't sure which equipment to choose? Well, then this is the video for you. Stay tuned. Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is the Crosstalk Solutions YouTube channel. If you guys are new to the channel and you're interested in Ubiquity equipment, wireless networking, regular networking, phone system stuff, and IT in general, please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below so you can stay updated with the latest and greatest videos that we put out. Also, if you're interested in any of the equipment that we feature in this video, I have Amazon affiliate links to all of the equipment down below in the description. Now, those are affiliate links. They don't change your price at all, but it gives us a couple dollars for the referral. So thank you very much. We appreciate every referral that we receive. Okay, on to the access points. So the first thing that you need to know about Ubiquity access points is that in order to manage the access points, you need a Unify controller or you need to install the Unify controller software somewhere. Okay, so where can you install the Unify controller software? First of all, it's free to download. You can install it on Macintosh, on a Windows PC. You can install it on Linux. Uh, however, the one thing that I would caution is if you are installing it on your PC or your Macintosh, you know, people tend to replace their computers every two or three years. And if you want your wireless to last longer than that, then I would recommend getting a Ubiquity Cloud Key. So essentially the Ubiquity Cloud Key is Unify Controller on a stick. It's the Unify Controller, the same one that you would download and install onto a PC or a Mac or Linux, but it comes on this handy little uh, device here. Now this plugs into PoE power, so you do have to have a PoE switch to power this, but having your Unify controller on a cloud key as opposed to one of those other methods is a really nice way to make sure that you have a dedicated device for controlling all of your Unify equipment. Again, though, you can install Unify anywhere you like. The important thing is that you have a Unify controller set up and working in order to adopt these access points and configure them for use in your home or business. Okay, so let's get to the access points. We have four of the Ubiquity access points here. We have the UAPAC Lite, we have the UAPAC LR, we have the UAPAC Pro, and we have the UAPAC HD. We're gonna talk about each one of these and where you should use them. We're gonna start from the smallest and work our way up to the largest. So let's go ahead and start with the UAPAC Lite. So this is the smallest Ubiquity access point. This device uh, retails for $79.20 per unit or you can get these in a, you can get it in a five pack for $335.20 which actually breaks down to $64.04 per unit. Now the difference between buying these in a single access point versus buying them in a five pack is that the single access point comes with your PoE injector and the five packs do not. The five packs assume that you have power over ethernet switches, so they don't include the injector. You do get the access points at a little bit cheaper price per unit if you need a quantity of five, but you have to have the PoE switch there to power them. Okay, so this access point is made for indoor use. This is not an outdoor access point. This has a two by two MIMO 2.4 gigahertz antenna and a two by two MIMO five gigahertz antenna. So MIMO stands for multiple input, multiple output. And basically MIMO is a technology that uses multiple transmitters and receivers in order to transmit more data at the same time. Two by two MIMO means that there are two transmitters and two receivers inside this access point. And I like to think of MIMO kind of like a freeway. So if you think of two by two MIMO, that means there's two lanes of uh, freeway going one direction and two lanes of freeway going the other direction, meaning that you can have two cars or one car in each lane traveling in either direction. In the case of the UAPAC Lite, it has a total throughput of 300 megabits per second in the 2.4 gigahertz band and 867 megabits per second in the 5 gigahertz band. It also has a range of 122 meters, which is roughly 400 feet. Keep in mind that the throughput and range calculations that are given for these devices are also assuming that you have perfect conditions, which no one has perfect conditions, right? You're gonna have this in a house, the house had wall, has walls, and there's a lot of things that can affect the signal strength as well as the throughput of any of these access points. So for instance, access point placement, 
uh, other access point or wireless interference that's in the area, the building construction, the building materials that were used in the construction of the building where the access point is placed, as well as just the placement of the access point itself. Is it like this? Is it on the ceiling? Is it right next to a wall? Is it in the middle of a ceiling? All of these things uh, contribute to having a better or worse throughput and range for any given access point. The UAP AC light is powered by 24 volt passive PoE. That means that you can power it in one of three ways. You can use the included PoE injector that comes when you purchase a single unit of this, not in the five pack, but in the single units. Uh, you have to have a switch, a ubiquity switch or other switch that can do 24 volt passive PoE, such as the Unify Switch 8 150 watt, or you have to have a PoE switch that does 802.3 AF or AT PoE, and then use a 24 volt PoE adapter. So where would I use this device? I have no problem using a UAP AC light in a standard home environment. Now when I say a standard home environment, I mean a home that's gonna range from, you know, 1,000 to 2,500 square feet or so, uh, just like an average size home. Uh, that has average usage. So maybe you've got 10 to 20 devices that need wireless access. And I'm talking about smartphones, televisions, uh, laptops, you know, anything that needs to get on the Wi-Fi and is using the Wi-Fi on a regular basis, I have no problem using a UAP AC light in that scenario. I actually used this specific access point in my home for well over a year and I had no coverage problems. I had it centrally located in the middle of my home and I was able to get a wireless signal all throughout my house, no problem. Okay, let's take a look next at the UAP AC LR. Here we can see the UAP AC LR side by side with the UAP AC light. You notice that it is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's also a little bit thicker if you look at it at this angle. Uh, and the UAP AC LR is an, also an indoor antenna. This antenna is 3x3 three three MIMO in the 2.4 gigahertz band and 2x2 two two MIMO in the 5 gigahertz band, which gives it a total throughput of 450 megabits in 2.4 gigahertz and 867 megabits in the 5 gigahertz band. The range on the UAP AC LR is 183 meters, which roughly equates to 600 feet. We'll talk about that more in just a second. And this device is also powered by 24 volt passive PoE. So UAP AC LR, or the LR in that model number stands for long range. So what makes this device long range? And according to the Ubiquiti website, the long range is achieved by having an innovative antenna design. So what do they mean by innovative antenna design? I'm not sure exactly, although I'm sure it has something to do with the thickness here, right? So you see that this one is a lot thicker than the UAP AC light. It's probably just a bigger antenna, um, you know, which takes up more vertical space inside the chassis of this unit. The question is, is the LR basically just all marketing by Ubiquiti to have a long range version of, you know, a smaller antenna? And that kind of, to me, begs the question, well, if the antenna design in this access point is so innovative, why do you need this at all? Why didn't you just put this antenna design in all of the rest of your access points and not have a long range model, right? So to me, it almost seems like a little bit of marketing fluff. I very, very rarely deploy these. In fact, I don't think I've ever deployed a UAP AC LR in a production environment. I typically go with the UAP AC Lite for homes and then the UAP AC Pro uh, if I'm going to be doing any sort of small business uh, you know, environment, which we'll talk about the Pro in just a second. So one thing to keep in mind with a longer range device, let's say that this does have an innovative antenna design that allows it to go an extra 50% further than these other antennas. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that the clients who receive it are going to be able to then send the signal back, right? So if this is able to transmit a lot further, you're also depending on the antenna of the receiving device to be able to send data back to this uh, UAP ACLR. So if you have a smartphone that doesn't have the world's best antenna, just given, given the fact that it's so compact in nature, you might be able to see the wireless network, but not really actually connect to it. So again, according to Ubiquiti, that's not a problem. They prefer going with this antenna design over using a standard antenna at a higher boost gain. Uh, and they say that that's better for devices. But again, I have not found that to be the case. Now, 
One place where you may want to use the UAP ACLR is if you have a situation where you need a repeater that's a little bit further away than one of these standard access points could cover. You could use this uh, as the base, you know, wired access point and then a second one of these LRs further away with the same antenna and the same range that is functioning as a repeater for a different area. Again, I've never deployed it that way, but that is one scenario I can think of where you might want to opt to use a UAP ACLR over one of these other access points. Okay, so MSRP on the UAP ACLR is $108.95 for the single unit or $423.90 for the five pack which breaks down to $84.78 per unit if you get them in the five pack. All right, let's move on to my absolute favorite access point. This is the UAP AC Pro. The UAP AC Pro is $128.09 per device or $615.91 for the five pack. Uh, in the five pack, that breaks down to $123.18 per unit. There is another model of access point that I don't have here that is very similar to the UAP AC Pro, and that's the UAP AC EDU, or the educational unit. And they call it the EDU because it has a loudspeaker wrapped around it. So it's essentially just a UAP AC Pro that's connected to a loudspeaker, and there's some loudspeaker functionality that you can use for like a school environment or any place where you need, need to make public announcements. Now, I don't have one of those models here, so that's why I'm not displaying that to you. And I don't really have much use for the UAP AC EDU. In my opinion, there are much better um, broadcasting devices out there. If I was going to put in a bell system or an announcement system at a school or a church or something like that, I wouldn't go with the UAP AC EDU the software has just not caught up to the point where it's really a usable device just yet. So I will mention it a little bit, but I'm not gonna cover the UAP AC EDU in great detail. Okay, so this device is made for both indoor and outdoor deployments. Uh, if you look at the back of the device, um, each of these comes with this little rubber plug that once you feed your wires in, you can feed your wires through the holes in the plug, and then this sort of plugs up the hole uh, to keep it uh, relatively waterproof, right? So that water doesn't get into your ethernet connections. Um, also, of course, you would wanna hang it so that it's you know, facing this direction or perhaps upside down uh, attached to something where water wouldn't be able to get in here. The UAP AC Pro has a three by three MIMO in both the 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz bands. Uh, it has a theoretical throughput of 450 megabits per second in 2.4 and 1300 megabits per second in the five gigahertz band. This has the same range as the UAP AC Lite rated to 122 meters or 400 feet. And this device is powered by either 802.3 AF or AT PoE. The UAP AC Pro also comes with a secondary ethernet port. So you plug your feed into the main ethernet port and then there's a secondary ethernet port which works as a path through. So if you have this at a remote location that's just got one wire running to it, you can then run a second wire out of this device to a switch or something like that to provide additional ports to other devices that are around there. You could also use this secondary port to feed out to, for instance, like a surveillance camera or something like that, or maybe into a PoE injector that then goes into a surveillance camera so that you could have a camera at a remote location as well as providing wireless coverage to that area. Okay, so where do I use the UAP AC Pro? This is the access point that I have absolutely sold the most of. I use this for most standard business environments. It's the default access point that I use unless there's a specific need to go for one of these other ones. So a standard business environment, I'm talking about a regular office environment, I'm talking about a restaurant, I'm talking about a hotel, basically where you have somewhere between 100 to 150 clients that are going to be connecting to this device in the coverage area that this device covers, right? So a hotel is a perfect example of that. This would be on the ceiling in between a row of rooms where you could have, you know, three to five devices in each room, uh, you know, spread over 10 room coverage area of this device, right? So that is a, a pretty good example and I have absolutely used these in hotels very successfully. Okay, so let's move on to the big daddy access point from Ubiquity. 
This is the UAP ACHD. And if we take a look at the difference in size here, this UAP ACHD is a little bit bigger than the UAP AC Pro. It's also a little bit thicker than the UAP AC Pro. The UAP AC HD comes in at $293.14 per unit. Uh, or if you get the five pack, it's $1,475 for that five pack. Now, the five pack per unit price comes out to $295, which is a couple bucks more than if you were buying each unit individually. So unless these prices change by the time this video comes out and you're looking to purchase a five pack of UAP ACHDs, it actually makes better financial sense to just buy five single units with the PoE injectors as opposed to buying the five pack. Now the UAP ACHD has 4x4 MU MIMO on the 2.4 gigahertz band as well as the 5 gigahertz band. So keep in mind that that's MU MIMO and not the standard MIMO of the rest of these access points. So what is MU MIMO as opposed to uh, the standard MIMO? Well MU MIMO stands for multi-user, multiple input, multiple output. It's a technology that allows for multiple devices to be sending and receiving simultaneously uh, in the lanes of the freeway, of the MIMO freeway of this device. Now, I'm not going to get too technical on the details of MIMO versus multi-user MIMO in this video. If you'd like to see a video that has more information about multi-user MIMO, I did a video specific on uh, specific to the UAP ACHD a while back, and I will put a link to that video up here in the corner. The throughput on this device is up to 800 megabits per second in the 2.4 gigahertz band and up to 1733 megabits per second in the 5 gigahertz band. Now there's no published statistics on the UAP ACHD in terms of range, but I would assume that the range of this device is going to be very similar to the UAP AC Pro, which is going to be 122 meters or 400 feet. The difference and the reason you would want this device is mostly for the throughput, not for the range. Now the UAP ACHD is powered only by 802.3 AT PoE+. This device also comes with the secondary ethernet port just like the Pro does so that you can use that to fan out to additional devices. And where you would want to use the UAP ACHD is in very dense device environments, right? So where the coverage area of this device could potentially get up in the multi hundreds of devices. So we're talking about a sports stadium, a, an auditorium, a movie theater. I've seen a lot of instances on you know Twitter and places where people have bought these antennas, the UAP ACHD, for their home. And it's just not necessary to spend the money on this device to put it in your home. There's no way that you have the number of devices that would make this device, this access point worth it for a home environment. If you want the best, quote unquote, best access point that you can get for a home environment, use the UAP AC Pro or use multiple UAC AP AC Pros spread out throughout your house. Another really good use for the UAP AC HD is as a wireless uplink to a mesh access point deployment. So their uh, mesh access points are a completely different category of access points. They're a little bit different than the type of access points that we're talking about here. I'm not gonna go too far into what mesh is in this video, uh, but I do have a video that covered mesh in detail and I will put a link to that video again up here in the corner. Let's say you had a campground and you wanted to provide wireless coverage using a mesh network. Well, I would potentially use a UAPAC HD wired into the LAN as the sort of wireless uplink, sort of the base station, like where all of the internet is coming from that fans out wirelessly and powers your mesh access points, right? Because that's gonna give you the most amount of throughput for all of your mesh APs, especially the mesh pro access points, which can do a decent amount of throughput. Okay, so that about does it for the explanation of the various Ubiquiti access points that are out there. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did find this video helpful and you're looking to purchase any of these access points, again, I would certainly appreciate it if you use my Amazon affiliate links that are located down in the description of this video below. Okay, so if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions and thank you so much for watching.